So not gonna lie, when I was learning, going back and relearning organic chemistry to teach this course, I went, came back across this mechanism and I thought it was so cool because I went ahead to Carrie's textbook. It is actually a well-written textbook. It was something I appreciated in college and when I became a teacher, I appreciated so much more how it's laid out. But they do a really good job of starting out the chapter on alkynes and drawing parallels to alkenes and then they get to this one step about water addition. And you're kind of expecting them to say, hey, this is a great way to get a diol, something that has two OH groups associated with the carbon group. And it's such a great plot twist. And I hate to say that about a textbook, but honestly, when you're like 200 pages into a textbook, it's nice to see a quote unquote plot twist. So we had this addition of water to how to alkenes. And that's your expectation. Like, oh, this will just put an OH group on the triple bond to give us a double bond with an associated OH group. And this is what's called an enol. Now, this is where the twist comes in. It doesn't actually follow the same, quite the same mechanism you, you'd expect and doesn't give you the products you expect. So it does start out the way you expect it to. Let's say we have our alkyne and we've got our water and we've got a nice little H plus sitting off. So we do need to acidify the water to make this happen. And what will happen is that our OH group will attack the most substituted carbon. We'll break the double, we'll break the triple bond, make it a double bond, and we'll have attack on the hydrogen. And what we will get is this compound. Now we're going to subsequently lose the hydrogen to another water, and this will be what you would expect based off of the parallels you saw with alkenes. Now, this is where the twist comes. This is what's called an enol. It is an OH group adjacent to, connected to a trouble bond, but they aren't long lived. So instead of getting this product, what we get is what's called tautomerization. So with tautomerization, we're going to rearrange our bonds and we're going to form a different type of compound. So we've got our alcohol and we've still got H plus floating around and what will happen is that the oxygen will actually send one of its lone pairs up to the double bond break the double bond attack the hydrogen and we've got another water sitting in solution this will remove our hydrogen for us and what we end up producing instead of the enol is the ketone so, unlike the addition to alkenes where we saw we formed an alcohol when we add the water, in this case, adding a single equivalent of water to this alkyne will not produce an enol, an OH group attached to a double bond, but instead it will form a ketone, and this is going to be accomplished through tautomerization. Our oxygen is going to rearrange. Now, some of the enol does exist in trivially small amounts, but we do know that it does occur based on some of the reactions we, we see happening. But this ketone here, is actually going to be the predominant product when we do this. So when we add water to a triple bond, unlike an alkene, we're not going to produce an alcohol. The plot twist here is that we're actually going to create, create a ketone by going through an alcohol, an enol, first.